This series begins by introducing Oji Su, a high school student who appears reserved and excels academically. However, he leads a double life as a mediator in the nightlife industry. In running his business, Jisoo is assisted by a man named Lee Wang Chiol, responsible for ensuring the safety of female entertainers. Jisoo also provides clients with a special bracelet who request services from him, so that Wang Chiol can supervise and protect them from danger. To prevent his identity from being exposed, Jisoo intentionally refers to himself as uncle, and he always disguises his voice so that no one recognizes him. On a daily basis, Jisoo lives alone because his father, Oh Jong Jin, disappeared without a trace since Jisoo was in middle school. One day, Jisoo opens the locker at the station to take advantage of his business, and then he receives a message from Wang Chiol that a client needs help. Shortly after, Wang Chiol is at the client's location, who is bruised because Tae Num, the man who hired her, has strange sexual fantasies. Because he has beaten the woman badly, Tae Num must pay compensation. Unfortunately, he doesn't have enough money, so Wang Chiol beats him up. Shortly after, Wang Chiol contacts Jisoo again to ask for a suitable punishment for Tae Num. Another day, Wang Chiol also provides security for some clients, earning a lot of money which he then puts in the station locker to deposit to Jisoo. After his job, Jisoo returns to his modest apartment, accompanied only by his pet snail. He works tirelessly to save money for his dream of attending college and working at his dream place. The following day at school, Jisoo notices Kwa Kite, a classmate who leads a gang known for bullying weaker students. However, Jisoo pays little attention to the commotion as he's busy admiring Ba Kyuri from afar. Although Kyuri has been his classmate for some time, Jisoo has never spoken to her, remaining a secret admirer. Later, Jisoo's homeroom teacher, Jo Jin Wu, invites him to join a school club focused on researching teenage social issues. Despite Jisoo's lack of interest, Jin Wu insists on including him in the research club, along with Kyu Ri, who appears bewildered upon entering the club room. After school, Jin Wu invites them to delve into cases of juvenile delinquency and other deviant behaviors. While Jin Wu and Kyu Ri discuss students who become prostitute within the school, Jisoo remains silent. Turning to a group of teenage girls who work as nighttime entertainers and are clients of Jisoo, they express curiosity about the figure uncle who facilitates their interactions with customers. Si Min He among them contacts Ji Su after securing a client, but he declines the job, urging Wang Chiol to take a break as he needs to fix his phone that day. Soon after, Ji Su messages Kyu Ri from his phone, as she had invited him to meet at a restaurant to discuss their club. Later, Ji Su takes out his savings to impress Kyu Ri and treats her at a cafe. However, upon arrival, he feels embarrassed after mistakenly ordering the wrong coffee. During their discussion about the club, Kyuri inquires about Jisoo's life, expressing sympathy upon learning that he lives alone without family. She praises Jisoo's resilience, which deeply touches him, as no one has ever acknowledged him in such a way before. On the other hand, without Jisoo or Wang Chiul's approval, Min He boldly meets a client, unaware that he is Ta Man. Seeking revenge for the thugs hired to attack him, Ta Man plans to ensnare Wang Chiul using Min He. When Min Yi realizes the danger, she activates the emergency button on her phone, but Wang Chiul's phone is inactive, so the emergency message automatically shifts to Jisoo, who is with Kai Ri at the time. Jisoo then tries to contact Wang Chiul, who remains unreachable. Meanwhile, he receives a call from Min Yi's phone, which has been taken by Ta Man as she has been tied up by him. Ta Man forced Min Yi to plead for Jisoo's help prompting Jisoo to leave Kyu Ri behind to rescue Mini. Hurrying to the station locker, Jisoo searches for tools to aid Min He's rescue, but finds none. Instead, he guides Min He over the phone, advising her to escape and informing the police. Panicked by the approaching police car, Ta Man and his accomplices flee, while Min He struggles to free herself and flee despite her injured leg. At the same time, police officer Lee Hae Kyung searches the motel rooms after a report of underage involvement in the entertainment business. Despite glimpsing Min He with an injured leg, she fails to locate her during the search. After Min He's successful escape, Jisoo returns to the cafe where he left Kyu Ri. There he finds Kyu Ri, who is the daughter of a famous artist agency owner, is seen dining with her parents. Kyu Ri's mother, Jo Hae Yan, appears to ask her daughter to start learning about the company's affairs by attending the shareholders' meeting next week. Although Kyu Ri is reluctant, she cannot defy her mother's orders. 
The following day, Q re-notices Jisoo sleeping in class and quietly takes his phone from his bag. Unfortunately, she can't unlock the phone due to the password. Until the break, Jisoo hasn't realized that his usual business phone is missing. He meets Q Ri to apologize for leaving her at the cafe due to his part-time job. When she hands him a club registration brochure, she accidentally sees another phone code of Jisoo, so she tries to unlock the phone she took using the same code. Unexpectedly, Q Ri manages to unlock the phone and reads various messages with Wang Chiu, realizing that Jisoo acts as a mediator for the female entertainers with their clients. On the other hand, Jisoo realizes his business phone is missing and immediately returns to school to check, finding out it's still there. Frustrated and panicked, Jisoo unintentionally disrupts Minghee and Kite's birthday celebration, leading to a confrontation where he is eventually beaten up by Kite. Fortunately, the fight comes to an end when Zhang Jin arrives, seeking reconciliation with his son Jisoo. At the shop, Zhang Jin proposes that Jisoo live with him, but Jisoo declines, frustrated by his father's history of exploiting him. Without wasting time with his father, Jisoo chooses to leave and continue searching for his phone, which is now tracked to an internet cafe where Q Ri suddenly receives a notification from Jisoo's phone asking for a request from Minghee for Jisoo to find a client for her that night. Shortly after, Minghee meets a client, but upon seeing the man, she experiences a panic attack, prompting her to press the emergency button for help. Q Ri receives the distress signal on Jisoo's phone and learns of Minghee's situation. Wang Chiu rescues Minghee, advising her to leave the nightlife industry. At the same time, Q Ri overhears their conversation, discovering Minghee's involvement in illegal activities. After returning home, Jisoo contacts Wang Chiu using his old number informing him that they can't conduct business for now due to his missing phone. Wang Chiol realizes that Jisoo's phone is being used by someone else. Soon after, Q recontacts Jisoo with his business phone, asking about revenue and the number of women he provides. Jisoo, using a disguised voice, doesn't recognize Q Ri's caller ID. He suspects the thief may blackmail him, instructing Wang Chiol to confront them. But just as Wang Chiol tracks Jisoo's phone, Q Ri learns of their plan and deactivates Jisoo's phone to prevent tracing, frustrating Jisoo as he loses track of it again. The next day, Jisoo is absent from school, leaving Jin Wu concerned to his student who has never skipped school before. Meanwhile, at home, Jisoo, fearing the thief may expose his illegal activities, plans to leave the apartment. While packing his belongings, Jisoo is surprised by Q Ri's arrival at his apartment after being instructed by Jin Wu to check on Jisoo. Feeling uncomfortable with Kiri's presence, Jisoo asks her to leave, but she insists until he allows her inside his house. In her heart, Kiri still can't reconcile Jisoo's innocent appearance with his illicit business. After seeing Jisoo's suitcase being taken out, Kiri becomes curious about where he's going, and he admits he's going to meet his father out of town, so he won't be attending school for quite some time. Shortly after, she asks for permission to go to the restroom, and secretly calls Jisoo using his business phone asking him to come to a certain place if he wants his phone back. She purposely makes Jisoo leave the house immediately as she intends to search his room. Not long after Jisoo leaves, Q Ri is shot by the arrival of Zhang Jin and hides in the wardrobe. She witnesses Jisoo's father taking all of his son's savings, prompting her to chase after Zhang Jin to save Jisoo's money. Q Ri follows Zhang Jin outside until she can't keep up after he takes a bike. Meanwhile, Jisoo resumes tracking his phone which is near his apartment, so he heads back. While crossing the street, Jisoo is surprised to see Zhang Jin running with his savings and Q Ri chasing after him. At that moment, Jisoo, checking the location of his phone, finally realizes that Q Ri is the thief he's been looking for. The next day, in class, Jisoo, still upset with Q Ri's behavior, is again harassed by Kite, which makes Jisoo even more annoyed and starts to resist. Shortly after, Q Ri suddenly arrives and asks Kite, not to bother Jisoo anymore, stating that Jisoo is officially her boyfriend. Hearing this, Jisoo quickly follows Q Ri, who leaves, to ask why she claims to be his girlfriend. She admits wanting to get to know him better because she wants to join the illegal business he has been running. Q Ri even offers her judo club friends to be Jisoo's clients, which can attract more female customers for greater profit. With the good looks and martial arts skills of Q Ri's friends, Jisoo old need to hire Wang Chiul to protect them. However, Jisoo refuses to collaborate with Kyuri. On another occasion, 
Jisoo plans to find Zhang Jin to get his money back. As he prepares to leave, he encounters Kyuri arriving at his apartment. He immediately searches her bag for his phone that she hasn't returned. Kyuri claims she doesn't have the phone and offers to join Jisoo's business, but he insists on refusing and leaves her behind. Despite his objections, Kyuri decides to follow him. After boarding a bus, they continue on foot while searching for Zhang Jin's address until they reach Jisoo's father's house in the late afternoon. Unfortunately, Zhang Jin's house is locked, so Jisoo and Kyuri enter through a window. Quickly, Jisoo searches his father's house, but doesn't find his 60 million won. Exhausted, Jisoo falls asleep at Zhang Jin's house and wakes up the next morning upon hearing his father's voice entering the house. Quickly, Kyuri knocks Zhang Jin down, and Jisoo stuns him with an electric device to force him to reveal where he hid the money. Zhang Jin confesses to investing it in a cryptocurrency site, which Kyuri recognizes as a scam. Shortly after, they receive notifications of significant losses suffered by Zhang Jin, prompting Kyuri to try to withdraw the remaining money, but Zhang Jin blocks her attempts. Realizing that his money is gone, Jisoo becomes increasingly enraged, even considering killing his father with a kitchen knife. Fortunately, he abandons the idea and chooses to leave Zhang Jin's house. Kyuri immediately follows him, opting to remain silent on the bus during their journey back to Seoul. Seeing Jisoo asleep, Kairi secretly returns his stolen phone. The following day, Jisoo realizes his phone has returned when he hears notifications at the train station on his way to school. Shortly after, the tutoring center calls, reminding him of his unpaid monthly fee. That evening, Jisoo tells Wang Chiu he's restarting his business, but Wang Chiu refuses until Jisoo settles his debts. Hearing this, Jisoo becomes even more confused because he has no money at all. Meanwhile, Mini approaches Wang Chiu, who is relaxing to ask why he has not started working as usual. Wang Chiu explains that he is still waiting for payment from his boss before resuming his work. At that moment, Wang Chiu briefly mentions Mini's well-off family and advises her not to work as an entertainer, especially since such a job could disturb Mini's mental well-being. With money troubles, Jisoo decides to take a part-time job, though the income won't cover his debts to Wang Chiu or tutoring fees. The next day, Kyuri visits Jisoo with a hermit crab that he once discarded. At that time, she also gives Jisoo a significant amount of money after selling some of her belongings and asks him to start his business and share the profits with her. But Jisoo refuses the money because he feels manipulated by her. After the school exams concluded, Jisoo, usually a top scorer, unexpectedly received the lowest grade in the class, sparking suspicions among his friends that he had cheated for high scores. Unable to tolerate their accusations, Jisoo approached Kyuri, suggesting she join his business. On another occasion, Kyuri continued to discuss the illegal business that Jisoo was involved in, even when they were at the cafeteria. She informed him that many students in their school were engaged in other illegal activities, such as buying and selling cigarettes, and even working as entertainment work. After paying Wang Chiu's salary, Jisoo's business resumed until he earned money. But worried that Zhang Jin might steal his money, Jisoo began to look for a safer place to keep his money. At that time, Kyu revisited Jisoo's apartment to ask for her share of the business profits. She also showed him that she had offered cooperation with members of the judo club to expand Jisoo's business network. Seeing this, Jisoo became interested in Kyuri's idea. So when she returned home, Kyuri began to manage Jisoo's business administration by recording all customers and incoming money. Shortly after, Kyuri's mother reminded her to prepare for a business meeting with the company's partner. After getting ready, Kyuri accompanied her mother to the office where Heigan introduced her to Mr. Choi, the CEO of Heaven Entertainment, who took an interest in Kyuri's beauty. Mr. Choi even suggested recruiting Kyuri into his agency, which made Heian proud. Later, after the event, Kyuri met Jisoo at their usual cafe to discuss sharing profits for Jisoo's business. After a thorough discussion, they agreed to split 30% of the profits with Kyuri. On another occasion, Jisoo, still without a secure place to keep his money, had to carry it in his bag. When he tried to store the money in his locker, he found it smeared with oil. Suspecting Kite's involvement, Jisoo, still upset about disrupting Kite and Minhee's romantic event the other day. After seeing his uniform also stained with the black liquid, Jisoo immediately washed it in the school toilet where he happened to meet Kite, who admitted that he held no grudge against Jisoo. On the same day, Haekyong and her police partner, Byung Kwan, 
were assigned to educate students at Quang High School about different types of teenage delinquencies. During their inspection of the school area, Hikyong, who had suspicions about Mingyi, observed her carrying the same bag she had seen during a motel raid. Hikyong and her colleague then trailed Mingyi as she proceeded to the back area of the school to smoke with some troublesome students. They dispersed after Hikyong issued a warning. Before departing, Kite covertly instructed a male student to place adult toys in Jisoo's bag. Kite then went to the teacher's room to report about the students smoking in the school toilet. With that report, the guidance counselor named Bakki intended to conduct searches in all classes. When Bakki entered Jisoo's class, Kyuri, who knew that Jisoo had some money in his bag, tried to alert him about the upcoming search of students' bags by the school authorities. Fortunately, Jin Wu reminded Ba Ki to seek the student's permission if the school was to conduct a search. So Jisoo could refuse the search, even discussing civil rights, which intrigued Ba Ki even more about Jisoo. Just before the situation became more challenging for Jisoo, the fire alarm went off, prompting the teachers to ask all students to run outside. Unexpectedly, the fire alarm was deliberately activated by Kyuri to save Jisoo from the search by the teachers. For her actions, Kyuri was summoned by a teacher who saw her actions through the surveillance camera. After Kyuri left the teacher's room, Jisoo gave her a burger as an apology for getting scolded by the teachers. She then invited him to go to the social research club room and suggested he hide the money under the sofa. Kyuri then took Jisoo's bag to retrieve the money, only to be surprised by an adult toy inside his bag. Jisoo appeared confused, questioning who the owner of the toy was. After school, Kyuri appeared happy walking with Jisoo towards the gate, but her mood soared when she saw her mother, Heian, picking her up. Heian, noticing her daughter's closeness to Jisoo, invited him into the car to inquire about his relationship with Kyuri. Later that evening, Kyuri visited her mother, who was judging talent at her agency. While there, she observed a boy band member being scolded for not focusing on practice and spoke with a young man named Tayrim who expressed dissatisfaction with his career in the entertainment industry. To assist him in earning extra money, she provided him with a link. After concluding her activities at her mother's agency, Kyuri went to Jisoo's apartment and brought food, intending to stay overnight. They then discussed Taerim working for Jisoo, prompting Jisoo to contact Taerim to discuss the job. Shortly after, Jisoo and Kyuri slept in separate rooms to rest for school the next morning. At school, Mingyi presented Jisoo with a gift, sparking jealousy in Kyuri, who then probed Jisoo about his ideal type of girl as they headed to the social research club room. Upon opening the door, they found Haek Yeom questioning Min, he about the motel incident from before. Jisoo and Kyuri grew anxious, fearing their business would be jeopardized if Mingyi revealed details. Haek Yeom assured Mingyi of confidentiality, but just as Mingyi was about to speak, Jisoo intervened, emphasizing her right to privacy and noting Haek Young's lack of authorization for the interrogation. Soon after, Haek Young was called away due to a complaint about a police officer pressuring a student to confess, ending the interrogation. Later that night at Jisoo's apartment, Kyuri urged him to remove Minhee from their chat group for security reasons. She also instructed Wang Chiol to meet Minhee, erase call logs from her phone, and take her distress bracelet. When Mimi inquired about her removal from the group, Wan Chiol explained it was due to her frequent panic attacks during their operations. On another occasion, Mimi received a call from Haekyum, who persisted in seeking information from her until Mimi grew annoyed and refused to testify. Meanwhile, Kite confronted Jisoo, who consistently defended Mimi, until Mimi intervened and stopped Kite's actions. In the midst of this, Kyu Ri angered warned Kite against harming Jisoo, asserting that Mingyi was at fault for not admitting to the theft she committed to buy a gift for Kite. Kyuri then took the injured Jisoo for immediate treatment. Shortly after, Mingyi met Jisoo to question why he always defended her, even suspecting that he liked her. Jisoo, still keeping his business providing entertainment women a secret, confessed that he defended her because everyone had the right to keep secrets. She then invited him somewhere and he accepted. Later that evening, Kyuri, who visited Jisoo's apartment, was upset not to find him there, unaware that he was with Mini. Unexpectedly, Mini asked Jisoo to meet Wang Chiol at a cafe to demand the severance babe owed to her after being removed from their group. She threatened to expose their business if she didn't receive it. At that moment, 
neither Minghee nor Wang Chiu realized that Jisoo was the mysterious figure, known as Uncle, who managed the business. Wang Chiu promptly contacted Jisoo regarding Minghee's severance pay, but Jisoo abruptly ended the call. Later, Wang Chiu was taken aback when Tae Rim approached him. Having encountered a customer named Dae Yol who mistook Tae Rim for someone involved with his girlfriend, prompting Tae Rim to disclose Wang Chiu's location. In response, Wang Chiu urgently instructed Ming He and Chi Su to find a safe place while they prepared to confront the approaching thugs. Despite being outnumbered, Wang Chiu fought bravely, but one of Dae Yol's henchmen injected him with a substance, causing him to nearly lose consciousness. Meanwhile, Ji Su attempted to protect Wang Chiu and Ming He but was eventually captured by Dae Yol and his men. Upon regaining consciousness, Jisoo discovered himself bound and gagged. Dae Yol, showing a photo of his girlfriend Mi Jung, accused Jisoo of having an affair with her. Despite Jisoo's denial, Dae Yol ordered his henchmen to harm him. Fortunately, Mi Jung intervened and reprimanded Dae Yol because she never cheated on him. Meanwhile, Ming He, distressed by Wang Chiu's injuries, urgently contacted Hae Kyung to arrange medical help for him. As Wang Chiu was rushed to the hospital, Minhee anxiously awaited news of his condition, but she was overcome with panic when she remembered Ji Su's abduction by Dae Yol's gang. Hae Young further pressured Minhee by asking what she was hiding, and fortunately, Ji Mu arrived to calm his student and ask Hae Young not to pressure Minhee. At Dae Yol's hideout, Ji Su seemed to have been released and treated after Dae Yol realized the misunderstanding. Dae Yol became curious about the app on Ji Su's phone, connected to Mi Jung's. Jisoo, reluctant to reveal all his operations, explained that the app was used by Mi Jung to coordinate entertainment women, while he provided security services. Impressed, Dae speculated that Jisoo was the admin for the business. However, his associate suggested eliminating Jisoo, fearing he knew too much. Jisoo pleaded for his life, proposing to convince his boss to collaborate. Jisoo then contacted Kyuri, who realized that Jisoo was in danger. Therefore, she lied about collaborating with them, making Dae Yol happy and deciding to release Ji Su. Ji Su reassured Jin Wu of his safety and confronted Kyu Ri about the risky plan. Meanwhile, Min Yi confessed her illegal activities to Ki Tae at a playground. Unexpectedly, Ki Tae had known about it for a long time, which made Min Yi feel even more ashamed, then chose to leave, dropping the keychain that Ki Tae had given her. Shortly after, Min Yi went to the hospital to visit Wang Chiu who was still unconscious. Meanwhile, Jisoo also arrived with a gift for Wang Chiu. Relieved to hear that Min Yi hadn't revealed their illegal business to the police, Jisoo felt reassured. The following day, Wang Chiu now awake, asked for his phone, which made Min Yi immediately look for it in Wang Chiu's car, although she didn't find anything. She then tried to obtain Uncle's phone number from her fellow entertainment women. After getting the number, she attempted to contact Uncle but Jisoo chose not to answer. Soon after, Minhee messaged Jisoo that Wang Chiu's phone had been confiscated by the police. Kyuri approached Jisoo, asking how they would handle the complex situation. Jisoo, feeling overwhelmed, contemplated their options, torn between facing jail time or the danger posed by Dae Yol and his associates. Kyuri determined offered to confront Dae Yol's group alone, a proposition Jisoo eventually agreed to. After Kyuri left, Kite approached her, curious about Minhee, but she brushed him off. Kite then began to suspect that Kyuri and Jisoo were hiding something. He admitted to trying to uncover Minhee's secret because he didn't want her to sacrifice her integrity for money. Later, Kite instructed his henchmen to track down the person who had sold Minhee on the online prostitution site. At the hospital, Jisoo quietly visited Wang Chiu's treatment room to give him a new phone, but Minhee soon arrived. They discussed Minhee's dilemma about whether to confess to the police. Jisoo cautioned her that confessing could lead to her arrest, while reporting Dae Yol's group might provoke retaliation. Minhee remained silent and asked Jisoo to stay with Wang Chiu. When Wang Chiu woke up, Jisoo apologized for not being more helpful, but Wang Chiu brushed it off as bad luck. Seeing Wang Chiu improving, Jisoo said goodbye and stepped into the emergency stairs to take a call from Dae Yol who inquired about what Jisoo's boss liked, hinting at a meeting with the uncle who ran the nightlife business. Jisoo was surprised by the request and suspected Kyu Ri might actually be meeting Dae Yol. Meanwhile, Kyu Ri was getting ready, putting on makeup, 
and discreetly arming herself with a knife in case Dayol posed a threat. At the restaurant, she was taken aback to find Jisoo with Dayol and his associates. She overheard Dayol urging Jisoo to drop out of school and work for him, with dire consequences if he refused. Jisoo felt frustrated about leaving school, while Kyuri blamed herself for Jisoo's troubles. On the other hand, Dayol ended the lunch event by leaving a gift for the uncle, in the form of money and a tracker so Dayol could locate Jisoo's boss. When night fell, Jisoo and Kyu Reed sat at the bus stop waiting for the bus. After Jisoo returned without bringing the box, Kyu Reed decided to take it without knowing that there was another tracker inside the gift box. Meanwhile, Jisoo, still on the bus, felt desperate because he had to leave school and his dreams of continuing his education were in jeopardy. Returning to Kyu Reed, she went to school to stash the gift box under the sofa. While taking a break, she was suddenly abducted by Dayol and his henchmen. When Jisoo arrived at the final bus stop, he got a call from Dayol, furious at Jisoo's deception. Dayol threatened to harm Kyuri if Jisoo didn't come to their headquarters immediately. Shortly after, Dayol's henchmen beat Jisoo until he passed out and stuffed him into the car trunk, bound for their headquarters. Meanwhile, Kyuri managed to injure Dayol with the knife she had brought. Jisoo, regaining consciousness, quietly opened the trunk, stunned a henchman with a stun gun, and drove off in the henchman's car, rescuing Kyuri. Despite Dae Yol and Mi Jung's attempts to stop them, they escaped. At the hospital, Min Gi helped Wang Chiu escape by attacking the police guards. Wang Chiu then took her to the house of his friend named Jade Kahide. Meanwhile, Ji Su and Kyu Ri burned the car they used and sought refuge in a motel. Inside, Kyu Ri asked Ji Su if he liked her because he always risked himself to protect her. Ji Su, in turn, asked a similar question, and Kyu Ri affirmed her commitment despite the danger. Jisoo laughed initially, but then broke into tears, feeling lost in the face of their situation. The following day, Kyuri, who woke up early, secretly took Jisoo's business phone and went to the Banana Club. While attempting to enter a room believed to be Dayol's, she was discovered and caught. As Dayol began choking her, Kite and his armed henchmen intervened, prompting a confrontation. Kyuri seized the opportunity to inform Kite about Mean He's whereabouts in the nightclub leveraging this information to her advantage. Dayol attempted negotiation with Kite's gang while Kyuri grabbed a fire extinguisher, attacked Dayol and escaped. Meanwhile, Kite and his gang stormed the club, engaging in a fierce battle with Dayol's henchmen. On the other hand, Wang Chiol also arrived at the Banana Club, joining forces with Kite's group despite his incomplete recovery. As Kyuri tried to exit, she faced Dayol's henchmen, but Jisoo came to her rescue. However, they were captured by Dayol, who dragged them to the rooftop. Fortunately, Wang Chiol arrived to save them, surprising Kyuri and Jisoo. He urged them to leave while he confronted Dayol alone. On the rooftop, Wang Chiol fought Dayol with his remaining strength until he finally managed to defeat the gangster. Meanwhile, Mingi was furious with Wang Chiol for abandoning her, prompting her to go to the police station and report what she knew about Jisoo's illegal business. With that report, the police raided the Banana Club and apprehended a group of students involved with the gangsters. Upon questioning at the police station, Haek Young inquired about Wang Chiol, who was discovered deceased alongside Dae Yol on the rooftop. Unfortunately, all the delinquent students, including Kite and his associates, denied any knowledge of Wang Chiol. Kite and his men had arrived at the Banana Club based on information about Min He's presence there. Days later at school, Students discuss the cases involving Kite and Mingyi, leading to Mingyi being isolated and bullied by her friends. Jisoo, feeling remorseful for Mingyi, attempted to reach out to her, but she blamed him for preventing her from confessing to the police. Mingyi believed that if she had been truthful from the start of the investigation, Wang Chiol would not have suffered the consequences during the riot at the Banana Club. On another occasion, Kyu Ri and Jisoo had a disagreement because she was determined to continue their business despite Jisoo's concerns for her safety. That evening, she asked Jisoo to meet her by the lake and instructed him to check the sofa in the school counseling club. Sending him a photo of an international flight ticket, she expressed her intention to travel to a country where she would be recognized. Although Kyu Ri wanted Jisoo to accompany her, he declined and urged her to take care of herself. Eventually, Kyu Ri left Jisoo, who remained contemplating the lake view. The following day, 
Jisoo examined the sofa in the counseling room and discovered a bundle of money given to Kiri by Daeyeol. Quickly closing the sofa, Jisoo departed, while Haekyung, who still possessed evidence of Jisoo's illegal business, attempted to follow the instructions from the notification of the installed application, leading her to the empty counseling room at school. Another day, Jinwoo was called to the police station after evidence was discovered in the counseling room. Learning about the summons, Jisoo began to panic, fearing exposure of his illegal activities. At the station, Jinwoo, questioned by Haekyung, believed his student wouldn't be involved in a prostitution case as claimed by the police. Back at his apartment, a panicked Jisoo attempted to write an apology for his actions and recalled Kyuri's suggestion to leave the country. Meanwhile, he received a message from Mimi asking to meet in the park. Handing Jisoo's cap found by Kite at the club, Mingi inquired if Jisoo was present during the chaos at the Banana Club. Jisoo offered only apologies, injuring Mingi. Just as Mingi was leaving, Jisoo halted her and disclosed his true identity and won chills. With this revelation, Mingi finally realized that Jisoo and Kyuri were the individuals behind the figure of the uncle who had been providing her with work. Unexpectedly, Mingi secretly recorded all her conversations with Jisoo. When she played back the recording in the park, Jisoo, hearing it, became enraged and tried to forcibly take her phone because he planned to surrender to the police. However, Mingi refused, leading to a struggle for the phone that caused her to slip and fall to her death from the stairs. Panicked, Jisoo then took Mingi's phone before going to the restroom to clean off her blood traces. Upon returning to his apartment, Jisoo hastily packed his essentials belongings to flee, but his plan was thwarted when Kite arrived seeking revenge for Mingi. While trying to contact Minhee, Kite heard her phone ringing inside Jisoo's bag, which led to the discovery of Minhee's bloodstained phone. Enraged, Kite demanded answers from Jisoo and violently attacked him with scissors, inflicting multiple stab wounds. As Kite prepared to strike again, Kyuri intervened and fatally struck Kite. She then assisted Jisoo in escaping, but when they reached the stairs, Jisoo urged Kyuri to leave him behind. Despite his plea, Kyuri begged Jisoo to stay with her. In the final scenes, Haekyung arrives at Jisoo's disordered apartment and discovers bloodstains throughout the place. However, despite following these traces, she finds nobody on the emergency staircase. Haekyung never imagined that a high-achieving student like Jisoo would be implicated in such a serious case. Eventually, Kyuri and Jisoo manage to escape successfully and start a new life in a different location, where they are shown caring for their pets. Moral lesson from the story, always double-check your backpack for unexpected surprises, like toys or money, and remember, if things get messy, a pet can always bring joy to your new life adventure.